At the height of America's rising prosperity in the 90s, the frenzy over a new toy mirrors the stock market. And they want beanie babies. A beanie baby. <laughs> the wolves on this Wall Street may be stuffed, yes. but they bite. The homicidal, bloodthirsty, greedy, slimy people. I think I'm through, because it's gotten out of hand. They started production in 93. Nobody cared. 94, nobody cared. But anyone who picked up a Beanie Baby couldn't seem to put it down. It was really difficult to walk past the table without just picking them up and, you know, bouncing them around. It was addicting to just be handling them. I'll use a French word. Their puissance, their purity really made people take notice. And that's what I've always really appreciated about Ty Warner as a designer. By Christmas of 95, regionally, in Chicago, where their headquarters was, people cared. I think they're fun to collect. Now, two years into production, Ty is selling the $5 beanies at select gift shops around Chicago. The company is also turning out many new characters, but exactly how many is a company secret? One that's designed to cultivate demand. $200, $300? He's worth anywhere from $500 to probably $900. Bongo, retired. I know. Don't touch him, though. A lot of the moms during that time were hunting for the Beanie Babies. And then after a while, we kind of got addictive for me to find as many as possible. Total addiction. Once you fall in love with them, you're all through. You'll do anything to get more. It was no longer a child's toy. It was the thrill of the hunt for me then. Say bye. <laughs> America is hooked. By year's end, Ty Warner's retirement ploy is working. Now sold in stores across the country, Ty's Beanie Babies generate an estimated 28 million in sales five bucks at a time. Well, they started lining up at 1.30 in the afternoon yesterday for our 8 o'clock sale. If you don't have a number, you're not going to be led into everybody else who has a number been rotated out. Every time he would retire beanies, they started buying not one or two. They were buying hundreds of them. <laughs> this is crazy. It was a beanie baby backup on Interstate 285 West after a load of McDonald's-bound teeny beanie bears spilled out into the middle of the interstate, most drivers simply slowed down. But others saw gold, and they went for it. There it is, there it is. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at this. Are they, they're rolling on this, right? It became a very different market. It was no longer the moms and their kids. It became people's full-time jobs because they thought it was easy money. So when that happens, you start to attract a whole different type of person. For a long time, my job was handling the articles, and I would see these newspaper articles of people running after UPS trucks. It's just one of those little fads, like an Elmo. Come here, Elmo. They want beanie babies. Ty Warner had to take the Ty heart off of shipping boxes because they would assault UPS drivers. I'll, I'll come out of the back of a store and there'll be five people waiting on me. There was a lot of theft. The security guard making the rounds was surprised by two men who jumped in from behind. Many organized crime rings recognized the value of beanies. And instead of drugs, instead of prostitution, instead of guns, they would actually break into shops to steal beanie babies. I think I'm through, because it's gotten out of hand. I am concerned. This beanie business is getting bad. It is. In Elkins, West Virginia, two night watchmen at a local lumber yard, Jeffrey White and Harry Simmons, are hoping to cash in on the rush. The two purportedly have a plan to start a trading business. Simmons loans White 150 bucks and several hundred dollars worth of beanies to sell. But the deal goes sideways when White doesn't pay Simmons. The two argue. White storms off and then returns with a gun. 
When the smoke clears, Simmons is dead, and Jeff White is sent to prison. 